It's been another big week in cruising with Carnival announcing an expansion and one cruiser learning why it's important to read that cruise contract. Ahoy travelers, it's Amy here with your weekly cruise news roundup and my thoughts on some of the biggest stories of the week. Do you read your cruise contracts? We have been seeing more and more stories of cruisers who are getting themselves in some bad situations because they aren't reading their cruise contracts. Not that long ago, one cruiser was seriously upset with Carnival for confiscating their kid's birthday present, a Nerf gun, because it was, wait for it, a gun. No guns, real or fake, are allowed on cruise ships. It's listed right there along with everything else you can't bring on a cruise ship. Did this parent not read the list of prohibited items or did they think they didn't apply to them? Hard to say, but they felt that Carnival owed them something for ruining their son's birthday. Meanwhile, I bet the other guests were glad they weren't having to avoid a small child running around the ship shooting Nerf at them. Well, the story this week is just as wild, so you will want to stick around for that and my thoughts about it. Carnival announced this week that they are already planning an expansion for Celebration Key, which is yet to see a single cruiser. Celebration Key, Carnival's upcoming private destination on Grand Bahama Island, is expected to open to guests next year. We were actually on the Jubilee when the newest promo video was launched and they played it on the Lido deck to great fanfare. Or at least they were trying to make that be a lot of fanfare around it. It is no surprise that with the announcement of a fourth XL class ship coming in 2027, Carnival has decided to go ahead and plan a pier expansion for Celebration Key so that four ships will be able to dock at the exclusive resort at the same time. This will include XL class ships. What are your thoughts about doubling the amount of cruisers at Celebration Key? Personally, if this was a destination I was looking forward to, I would be making sure I booked a cruise headed there prior to the expansion so I could enjoy it before an additional 8,000 cruisers joined me. Story number two, are you ready to invest in Viking? Reports have come out that Viking has filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission for an IPO. Now, this is an initial public offering, which means they're going public with the company. If you have the money, would you consider getting some Viking stock? This is a well-established luxury river and cruise line. I'm no stock expert by any means, but I would assume your initial investment would be a profitable one. What do you think? Will you be trying to get yourself some Viking stock? Well, we all hate TOS, those terms of service agreements. It seems like everything now comes with one. I know that it is so tempting to just scroll down and hit accept every time you see four pages of terms and conditions. I do it too. But when it comes to actual contracts that involve money, it's a good idea to read through them, which is a lesson that some cruisers have had to learn the hard way. This week a story came out of a woman who showed up for her three night cruise on board the Carnival Luminosa only to be turned away. Well, why? because she showed up to the terminal 26 weeks pregnant with a note from her doctor saying it was perfectly fine for her to go on a cruise. Not only was she told by Carnival that she could not cruise, but she won't be getting her money back either. Now, why is that? Carnival Cruise Line's pregnancy policy is outlined in detail on their website, clearly stating any guest who has entered or will at any time during the cruise enter the 24th week of estimated gestational age in her pregnancy agrees not to book a cruise or board the ship. The contract also notes that no refund or compensation will be provided to a guest in violation of the pregnancy restrictions. Carnival reserves the right to debark, deny boarding, or cancel the reservation without refund, compensation, or payment of any guest who is unfit to travel and or who will be in excess of their 23rd week of gestation at time of sailing. Well, when agreeing to the cruise ticket contract, you agree to not enter your 24th week of pregnancy before or at any time during your cruise. Well, despite agreeing to these terms, whether she knew it or not, the woman is not happy and is attempting to get a refund and claims that Carnival's policy is discriminatory towards pregnant women. The problem is that when agreeing to the contract, you also agree to no refund or compensation if you violate pregnancy restrictions. 
This isn't unique to Carnival either. Other major cruise lines have very similar policies regarding pregnancy and travel. Royal Caribbean International denies boarding for any guest who is more than 23 weeks pregnant. On Norwegian Cruise Line, guests may not have entered their 24th week of pregnancy by the time the cruise ends, and the same limit is applicable for Disney Cruise Line. The woman in question, Kaylee Farrington, stated, quote, My obstetrician is giving me the all clear, and they still wouldn't let me on board. Farrington and her mother, who paid for the cruise, went on to claim that the cruise line is discriminating against pregnant women and complained that they weren't notified at the time of booking specifically about the policy. It's unknown when they booked the cruise and if Farrington was already pregnant at the time that they booked it. However, Carnival's policy on this is very clear and is stated several times throughout the cruise contract. Now for me, the note from the doctor is a red flag. It actually makes me think that she was well aware of the policy in the contract and was hoping to get around the rules with a doctor's note. But this isn't gym class. If she wasn't worried, why would she go to the trouble of getting a note in the first place? That's my thought. She even commented about the fact that women are allowed to fly when pregnant, you know, from 28 weeks up to 36 weeks, depending on the line. And this was part of her reasoning for why she should have been allowed to cruise. Well, you aren't on a plane for a week. If something were to happen to a woman on a plane and she goes into labor early, the plane can make an emergency landing within a reasonable amount of time. That just isn't the case with cruise ships. And cruise ship medical centers are just not equipped to deal with premature births. As for not getting a refund, well, this is yet another good example of why you should purchase travel insurance. The right travel insurance would have covered this. Be sure to always get travel insurance and get the insurance that meets your specific needs. Now, I will link the original news story on this below if you're interested in hearing Farrington speak about this herself. But what are your thoughts on this? Should cruise lines be clearer about their pregnancy policy? Maybe have a pop-up that you need to click ensuring that you understand the policy. Well, personally, I think that would just be an annoyance for 99.9% .9 of cruisers, most of whom are either well aware of the policy or it doesn't apply to them. Plus, many cruisers book years in advance, so it is entirely possible and very likely actually that at the time of booking, a woman is not even pregnant, but then is too pregnant by the sale date to cruise. Are cruise lines doing enough to warn passengers about this policy? And who is at fault here? Let me know. My advice to you is to read through that cruise contract. This should be especially obvious to anyone with any kind of special circumstance. Start by scanning through the bolded points and see if any of them may apply to you now or in the future. Are you a wanted criminal? You probably shouldn't book a cruise. They will find that warrant and you're going to be picked up by authorities. It may not be until you get back from your cruise, but they're going to find out about it. There is a whole section in Carnival's contract about being denied boarding if you're a convicted felon. Don't make it to the port in time. You aren't getting a refund. That's your fault you didn't get there in time. The contracts are long and include a lot of things that you should be aware of. Now, do you read through or at least scan your cruise contracts? I may not do it every time now, but I sure did before I booked my first cruise. Well, are you ready for more information on cruising? Why not stick around and check out this video and then come back for more information designed to help you have an amazing cruise. Have a blessed week, everyone.